I'm Derek, it's me Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons and Fighting. I am glad you are here, because it is time we revisit this thing. And you know this thing. You've seen it in bargain bins, garage sales, dumpsters. It is the infamous Tony Hawk Ride controller. I can honestly say I've worked harder on this game than I have in almost any other game. I mean, I dove into this one as much as I did the very first Pro Skater. So this is my baby. My heart and soul is in this one, and I'm really proud of it. But how can he say that about a pile of doo-doo caca? Garbage, as the kids say. Why would great uncle Tony lie to us? If you know anything about Tony Hawk Ride, probably all that you know is that it was a disaster. Definitely a low point in the Birdman's video game career. Tony Hawk himself seemed pretty bitter about it, even going on record years later saying, People already had their opinions set about Ride before it even came out. The ones that were giving it bad reviews were the ones that played it for 15 minutes and didn't go through the tutorial. They just got on and thought they'd be experts at the game because they are expert gamers. They didn't give it a chance. You know what, Australian Tony Hawk? You're right. They didn't give it a chance. Were the reviewers poisoned from the start? Right there. That was, but how do I not? I don't know, it was still pretty bad. Maybe I was like you. I'd see a Tony Hawk board at a thrift store or a game shop and just laugh and go, dang. <laughs> Remember this thing? <laughs> but then our Patreon voted for Uncle Derek to ride Tony's ride and report back. And I did a lot more than just ride. I went deep deep into the world of video game skateboard peripherals. And what I found rocked me to my very core. Dude, dude, it's like shockingly. What the fuck is going on? This is punching weight, and this is the world's top rated video game skateboard peripheral. And I'd be saying, wait, Uncle Derek, isn't it the only video game skateboard peripheral? And no, there was Tony Hawk Motion. So Ride is best and second worst. Hey, thanks for picking up Tony Hawk Ride. What you have in your hands is one of the most advanced game controllers ever made, and we are stoked that you're about to experience skateboard video gaming at its best. We celebrate the weird, ambitious, and unnecessary around here, and it is time to go back when Grunkle Tony tried to evolve video game skateboarding, and no one believed him. But I got my board, I got my COVID lockdown belly, and I am ready to believe that a man can skateboard. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm just a uh, cool guy zone. Oh, cool guys only. Sorry. So, how did we get here? Well, first off, it was the mid naughty oddies, and Tony Hawk was tired. The franchise's yearly entries since 1999 were catching up to series developer Neversoft. The peak was somewhere around three, four, or thug, depending on who you talk to, with steady diminishing returns since Activision's once award-winning cash cow wasn't pulling serious numbers anymore. By 2007, the Birdman had been officially dethroned by EA's Skate, with a fresh style and control scheme that shredded the competition, selling and reviewing better than that year's game, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. However, a new cash cow had emerged for Activision, Guitar Hero. This was the golden era of plastic peripherals, and Guitar Hero 3 specifically was, at the time, one of the most profitable games ever made. The solution to the Tony Hawk problem was obvious. Let's skate win the battle, we'll win the war with BAM! By doing with Tony Hawk what Guitar Hero was currently doing extremely successfully for rhythm games. However, Neversoft would not be the ones to chart this new chapter for Hawk. Just like that, after eight years, Neversoft's time with the Hawk was done and they were reassigned to Guitar Hero and Call of Duty Duty. For Ride, Activision gave the reins to a brand new studio, Robomodo, which was a weird choice, but Robomodo did have some bona fides. The studio was formed from the ashes of EA Chicago, hot off of Fight Night Round 3 and Def Jam Icon, and they had some talent from early 90s Midway. After only two years of development, which was definitely enough time, the Tony Hawk Ride game and board finally arrived October 2009, bundled together for a whopping $120. And I got mine for $5.90. It apparently took Robomodo half of their development time just getting the controller right. So again, we are back to one year to make a Tony Hawk game. I gotta say though, for a controller that started out as a gutted Wiimote duct tape to a skateboard, it's actually really slick. It has two accelerometers and four infrared sensors. That's what those black doodads on the side are. Of course, it has buttons too. Nothing crazy, but we got four face buttons, start, back, sync, Xbox, and the D-pad. The crazy thing about this controller is that it syncs up great with the 360 and works great in the menus. Well, I mean, 
the D-pad does. I'm kind of disappointed that I can't update my Xbox Live password with an Ollie, but not to worry, I'll just start the game. Board will function only when you are skating. Please press start on a controller. That's a good sign. Maybe this is a fitting way to start my journey to the center of Tony Hawk Ride. It's so frustrating to see this because I just used the ride board to navigate to the game, but okay, whatever. I'll turn on my lane controller if it'll get things moving. And then of course comes the Whopper. It's time to calibrate. Those sensors are going to be super calibrated in a bit. This is probably the easiest thing you'll do all day. Now, the first time I tested the controller, it was a breeze. No problems. You will have to take my word for it because then on actual shooting day, they would not work. Didn't quite get it. Let's try again. Tried everything. New batteries, clearing the floor. Sorry, puppies, it's for a greater cause. Probably the easiest thing you'll do all day. We tried for hours. We even went out and bought a second one. Yeah, we have two of these now and they would not calibrate. I Googled it. Apparently a lot of people had this problem back in 2009. I took a two hour rage nap and then tried again. But this time I had divine inspiration. Tried it with the lights off. And it magically worked. I don't know, but be free, my puppies. Go forth and ride. We had more problems getting this thing working that producer Grace and I talked about on our podcast that I always forget to promote. Stop skeletons of podcasting. Check it out. I wish I could say that it was all worth it once I finally got it working, but even when the Activision CEO says it could have been better, then you know it could have been way better. And it seemed fine at first. What you have in your hands is one of the most advanced game controllers ever made, and we are stoked. Doesn't get any better than this. This is it. Shut it down. But I ain't no kind of professional skater or skater at all. So I decided to take Mr. Hawk's words to heart and started with the tutorial. I breezed through it pretty easily, struggling a bit here and there, but I was just getting comfortable with the board. But then a brick wall, a insurmountable mountain. May I present to you the hardest challenge in video game history. The flick, the flip flick trick, the flip, the flick flick, this thing, whatever it is. Whatever it's actually called. It's got a dumb name and I hate it. Flick flip tricks use the same idea of an ollie and another motion. You tilt back on the board and quickly turn and then return back. That's it. Simple enough, right? It's impossible. It cannot be done. But well, this game just doesn't recognize it. I watched the tutorial over and over. Yo, do a kickflip! I tried hundreds of times. Do a kickflip! I tried with just my hands. What more do you want from me, Tony? Do any flip. I even went onto YouTube and watched a supplementary tutorial that Robomoto posted when no one else could pass it either. So this is it. This is right. Satan will have me attempting flick flip tricks in hell. I, either either doing them or trying to say it. Those both those both seem like hell to me. He's not doing a kickflip. I've done it all, Tony. I watched the YouTube video. I watched your thing. I can do it. You just I'm not what. Nothing's good enough. Right there. That was, but how do I not? Nah, but it'll take more than that to get Uncle Derek down. Skateboarding isn't about following the rules anyway, so I don't need no stupid tutorial. And usually you play on a track with minimal steering, but this is the most advanced skateboarding controller ever made. So it's time for that real ride experience. The most advanced game controllers ever made. Like the little wheel for loading stopped spinning. Did it crash? Oh no, you know what that means. Those sensors are going to be super calibrated in a bit. This is probably the easiest thing you'll do all day. We didn't quite get it. Let's try again. The easiest thing first. you'll do all Stand day. In one of these safe zones ah! away from the side. You can't stop me, Tony. You, you put your heart and soul into this. And I believe in you, Tony. Extreme difficulty. No holding back. Let's go. I feel, I feel like a cool guy. I feel like a cool guy right now. I make great decisions in my life. In retrospect, the terrible review scores were understandable. Gotta face facts here. This game does not live up to its $120 promise. God, the loading screens are sponsored by Stride and the cutscenes are on a T-Mobile sidekick. You are not making your case any easier, Tony, but let's just cut the crap. This is a barely functioning game. I, I didn't do that. Whether in the tutorial or in the main game, getting this board to do anything on purpose is just impossible. I had the most luck just bouncing the board under my foot. Insane combos. Honestly, it's a game that's the most fun when you just make your own fun. Video game skateboarding at its best with hot moves like the tummy seesaw, the booty scooty, the kick drum, 
the Upside Down. <laughs> yeah! This is my baby. My heart and soul is in this one, and I'm really proud of it. Is this what your soul looks like, Tony? At least these things can take a beating, so you really can play around. Seriously. <laughs> okay, I'll goof it around to side. This game is garbage and not the good kind. I, like the rest of the world, was ready to throw the whole thing out the window, but then... My work was not done. This part of the video is sponsored by NordPass. Man, you ever feel like your passwords are a wipeout waiting to happen? Cow a bummer. That's why there's NordPass, which makes it easy to organize your logins in a secure vault. Man, you can access them all with just one master password. That's gnarly. Bro, not only do you not need to worry about forgetting passwords, NordPass can generate radical secure passwords like, I don't know, 3A at sign X 503K number sign S6KXO asterisk. Wait, uh, don't, don't use that one. Oh, bail, bail. But don't worry, bros. NordPass checks your password health to help keep your info safe online. You can get 74% off NordPass at nordpass.com slash stopskeletons or use the code stopskeletons. Plus get an additional four months for free. That's nordpass.com slash stopskeletons or use the code stopskeletons. You see, Robomoto effectively only made Ride in a year after finalizing the prototype, but there was a sequel. Tony Hawk Shred came out the next year in 2010. So if Robomoto really needed extra time to make Ride work, this was their chance to prove it. My expectations were as low as physically possible, but I booted up the tutorial and right away, it definitely felt a little tighter. But before too long, my nemesis appeared. Do five? Do five of one? Did I do ten of... My god. The flick flip trick. That counted! And literally nailed them all on my very first try. I said four in a row! This is the best game ever made! Oh, you got it! First try! I didn't successfully do it once on Ride. 100% success on Shred. You were, you were filming that, right? You got that, right? Yeah. And then as I kept going, the moves kept coming and it was working. The board was working. The nuance was there. The feedback was there. I could tell when I wasn't nailing my flicks. I wasn't leaning back far enough. Wasn't quite hitting my marks. I was learning and improving and having fun. I was legit having fun on a Tony Hawk ride board. Or at least compared to the first game. So far, it looks like I can complete the tutorial. Five stars. But y'all, they, they, they did it, and not with an improved board. Shred did come with a new board bundle, again for a pricey 120 bucks, but it was just a paint job. I mean, Activision sold the game by itself for people who already had the right controller, but a new game, same board, and it's amazing. Okay, and by amazing, I mean it's a functioning game, but coming off of Ride, any game feels amazing. Shred is a surprisingly deep package. There's quite a few levels in the campaign, and there's also snowboarding for the first time in a Tony Hawk game. And I bet that had nothing to do with Sean White's skateboarding coming out on the same day in North America. But on the skateboard front, I could totally imagine kids playing Shred and then wanting to pick up a real skateboard. And I think that was Tony's goal all along. You can still make your own fun. The game makes you wave your hand in front of the sensors to perform grabs, and I cheated by using an RE4 chainsaw controller which I actually didn't need to do. The sensors aren't that strict, but look at me, I'm chainsaw shredding. I was ready for this video to just be pointing and laughing at this thing, but people say that DJ Hero was the tragic casualty of the plastic peripherals craze. And well, I say that it was, and maybe Tony Hawk shred was too, because this was 2010. When this journey started, it was 2007. Robomoto spent two years prototyping a controller and making a game. By the time Ride actually came out, the moment had peaked, yet Ride still coasted to some decent sales. One year later though, the trend was completely over. Dead. Plus, word of mouth on Ride was absolutely toxic. Shred was so dead on arrival that few websites even bothered to review it, and it sold a few thousand copies in its first week. That is Tomb Raider on the N-Gage numbers. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen one of these fancy red models in the wild, for what that's worth. Shred is so shockingly good that I think we all owe Tony Hawk an apology. Ride is a broken mess of a game, I can't defend that, but Shred, he came correct with Shred. It's a shame that no one was listening. 
But are there any more secrets to this board? Even Launchpad wanted me to investigate new angles. You want me to stop playing Tony Hawk Ride? I can't. The Patreon supporters voted on it, buddy. I'm sorry. Of course, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was, can I replace that hunk of plastic with another hunk of plastic? Before we tested the 360 version, we didn't know what we were up against. So we figured, why not try the Wii versions without the ride board? <laughs> Damn, Shred Wii, really breaking the bank over here. You see, I'm already a bit of a skateboard Wii game connoisseur, and I've spent a fair amount of time with the Wii Balance Board, the gaming peripheral that bullied an entire generation. And it had a lot of the same doohickey thingamajigs that the ride controller had going on. I mean, this thing shares DNA with the Wii, so it made sense to me. And I even found a forum post confirming that the Balance Board did work on the Disney trip planning forums. Walt, don't fail me now! He failed me. And retrospective should have seen that coming. Huh, 350. Well, that's a gallon of gas I'll never get back. But that's on me for thinking that there will be a way to get around the Activision bundle. Activision gon' get paid. Unless you buy used. <laughs> but while I got the Wii Balance Board hooked up, let's really put this thing to the test. If any device can go toe to toe with the Tony Hawk Ride Board, it's the Nintendo Wii Balance Board. Let's see if Ride really is the most, most advanced best. skateboard controller ever made. And the best place to start is with Skate It. The Skate games may have bested Tony with the realism angle, but that was on a controller. What if we step into the physical realm? This is gonna be the realest skateboard experience, Grace. I'm feeling it. Skate It did dumb it down for the balance board, but whoa boy, they made one fatal mistake. Doing tricks on the board is fine, but the steering is god awful. At least Ride was smart enough to put you like on a track. I mean, maybe it's because I'm coming right off of Tony Hawk Shred, but simple movement was so frustrating, I could not finish the tutorial. Go. No. Tweaking. Go. It's not even balance board. Oh, I can't go fast enough. Absolute junk, at least with the balance board. Maybe without the board, the game plays better, but that's not what we're here to see. Uh, so let's move on. I have to get the taste of skated out of my mouth. How you feel about going home with Sean White? <laughs> what about Sean White, the Ubisoft RC Cola of the extreme game genre? He actually had a handful of games, but this is his only skateboarding game. Right off the bat, you steer with the controller. So already a million times better than skate it. Look at that. I can just stop and very easily turn around. Man. That's nice. You can use the front or the back of the board to jump. You can also use A or B on the Wiimote to pop a jump. It's way more arcadey, but I like it. It looks pretty sharp too. That's got a great colorful style. It's fun. My dogs didn't even seem to mind it. But again, we're judging this against the ride board here. And honestly, it doesn't stack up. So that's one more point for Grunkle Tony. Honestly, out of these, my favorite is Skate City Heroes from Berlin-based Zero Scale Game Development. Uh, who made exactly two games, it looks like, and published by noted Wii shovelware slingers, Zoo! This is that good kind of garbo that was all over the Wii. Pick your grumpy cartoon looking avatar and proceed to save the city with your skateboard. It's an open world style game with quests. There's Sonic Adventure style combat. Yeah, there. There you go. yeah. it's a neat little gem but it barely uses the balance board. Like Sean White, it's there, it's neat, but it's another game that I'd rather just play on a controller. Sure, these games are all better than Ride, but not Shred. And even still, this is punching weight where we celebrate ambition. And Ride was trying for something that these others really weren't. None of these Wii games were made for the balance board. It's just a nice little extra cherry on top. So judging these two devices, yeah, the Ride board truly is the most advanced skateboard controller ever made. So advanced that it's its own controller while also having controller buttons on the side. And you know what that means when there's a weird device that's got controller buttons on the side. This video is only two thirds done because it is time to test. Welcome back to another episode of using controllers for things are not meant for wait. Remember, this is actually an impressive piece of tech with four sensors and two gyros. I would personally love to skate through other games and class. What is the first question you must answer? That's right, can it play Doom? It's just information that needs to be documented. Plus Doom is a relatively simple game. It'll let us know what we are up against. Oh, I forgot the XBLA versions of Doom, which are delisted now, by the way, don't have button customization. Analog sticks and shoulder buttons are movement and shooting. 
All I got here are the D-pad and face buttons, which are just weapon selection and map. But what about all those gyros and sensors? I toss this thing around like a ragdoll. I ain't get a single half step, not not even a nudge. Not a single nudge from the Doom guy. I want to rip and tear. Toss my hands up in defeat, and suddenly Doom guy started firing. I don't know what I did. I, I couldn't do it again to get him to stop, and soon I was punching nonstop. I get no idea what exactly I did, but clearly the gyros and sensors control the shoulder buttons in some way. We moved on to Silent Hill 3 HD because, hey, skateboards are apparently all Silent Hill means to Konami right now. Here is some radical fan art to cheer you up from that depressing statement. Anyway, started a new game and right away I am stuck in search view and Heather is stuck at the ready with her weapon. Oh, we tried to drape a towel over the sensors to see if that would make any kind of difference to block them out. It didn't. Movement with the D-pad is great, the buttons work fine, and while I admire Heather's eagerness to attack and dethrone God, I can't open the door until you put the weapon down, Heather! This is more confirmation that the sensors and gyros do control buttons on the controller. Still don't know how exactly, though. We need something less complex than a full 3D action game. Fez! Here's hoping Phil Fish doesn't get mad for playing his game with a skateboard. Fez is a simpler game, at least for what we're looking for. Move and jump with the face buttons, rotate the world with the shoulder buttons. And this is where we found that the shoulder buttons are almost perfectly synced to the sensors. It did it while you did that? You like look down and wait, what? Or kinda? We could never get a consistent reaction. Sometimes it would react to my hand over the sensor, other times it seemed to move randomly. I'd try with the board on my lap and then standing on it. With a little bit of hacking, maybe we could actually use this thing in games like Fez. I think my dogs would be pretty interested. Then, we had to try Skate, just to see if it magically had ride board support. It didn't, but you can still have a lot of fun falling off of your board. But that's about it. The D-pad and buttons on this thing work pretty well. Each direction has its own little button. It's honestly better than a standard 360 D-pad. So the board is great for retro classics like Sonic and Streets of Rage. Very dumb. I had a lot of fun. I recommend it. And since we had two boards, might as well have a fight. If we've learned anything this year, it's that Tekken works great on a DVD remote and a skateboard. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it works for any game that doesn't rely heavily on analog sticks and shoulder buttons. And games like that are super rare in the seventh generation. It's so frustrating because it's so close to being there. If only I knew how to get the accelerometer and the IR ports to register as analog sticks. Like, it should be possible, right? Maybe? Or am I a giant idiot? <laughs> That's also possible. I know I'm not the guy who's gonna beat Dark Souls with a ride controller. I'd like to leave that up to smarter people than me. I even reached out to one of them, Super Lewis 64 controller bender extraordinaire. And he called the ride board one of the most untouched controllers he'd ever seen. I looked around and beyond seeing people turn the ride board into an actual skateboard, the closest thing I've seen to someone using the ride board as a full controller was YouTuber basically homeless. And even in his video, I'm not sure how he did it. He is using the Wii version instead of the 360 version. That might've made a difference, but it kind of looks like he maybe just drilled a Wiimote into it or something else. I'm not sure, but here's him using it. It's not clear how from the video, but no hate though. If that's how he did it, that's really going back to the controller's roots. But I couldn't leave it at that. No, y'all deserve the best. So I went online and I got a wireless 360 receiver dongle for the PC. Somehow I've survived without one for all these years, but I tried hooking it up to the PC just to see what would happen. Hey, how about some Japanese arcade Left 4 Dead 2, huh? Here we can look at the controller options way more closely. Again, we weren't able to get consistent feedback from consistent gestures. It still felt random, but we were able to get names for the Y axis positive and X axis negative. But then trying to get them working in game was impossible. We went on a Tony Hawk ride journey for this video and we learned that this really is a very impressive piece of tech. Actually, this is a piece of cardboard. And maybe we owe Tony Hawk an apology because the problem wasn't the ride board, but the ride game because the sequel is actually pretty fun and delivers on Grunkle Tony's promise of bringing the next level of skateboarding games. I totally recommend trying it out, especially since today, the price tag will be a little less than the $120 Activision was trying to squeeze out of Yule back then. Are there any other so bad it's good peripherals from games past you'd like to see Uncle Derek try? Let me know in the comments below. 
We have our very own skateboarding skeleton t-shirt that's available at Pixel Empire. Link is in the description below. Thanks to all our Patreon supporters for sending me on this wild quest in the first place. I do it all for you crazy maniacs. They support the show, by the way. Did you know that? All these people here, they get to see videos early and then vote on future videos. And you can be, you can join the ranks at just roughly the cost of a used copy of Tony Hawk Ride. But hey, you know, if you can't swing that, just subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, tell a friend when somebody asks, hey, what's the dumbest, funnest, greatest YouTube channel out there? Tell them about Stop Skeletons and Fighting. I will see you next time, but until then, skate on.